Hi, in this video we gonna see another schematic, but this time an advanced schematic. You know why? Because this schematic is for an improved laptop. Here we have the proof. As you can see here, we have just one chipset in this schematic. We call this chipset APU, as you can see, accelerated processing unit. So sometimes you find in schematics CPU, GPU, and APU. You know what is the difference? So the, P, the CPU is the central processing unit. It is separated from other chipsets like Northbridge, ICH, and graphic card. But for the APU, it gathered and combined all chipsets in the motherboard, including the CPU, the central processing unit, or the processor, the North Bridge, the South Bridge, or ICH, and also the graphic card. So that's why here we have just one chipset, as you can see. We have here just other integrated circuits, memories, ports, etc. But we have here just one chipset, okay? That's why this is a very improved and advanced laptop, okay? So as you can see here, we have the APU that gathers the CPU, the graphic card, the North Bridge, and the ICH. So we have here the RAM, as you can see. The RAM connected to these chipsets and we know that in standard laptop and old laptops, the RAM is always connected to the North Bridge. Okay. And over here, as you can see, we have the graphic controller, as you can see, also connected to these chipsets. And we know in standard laptop that the graphic controllers and ports are connected to the graphic cards. Okay. And of course, here we have also the HDMI and here we have other ports and integrated circuits also connected to these chipsets. Basically these ports and integrated circuits are connected to the ICH in the normal laptops. Okay, so this is a very important tip. So let's understand here some terminology and some acronyms. As you can see here, we have the DDR3. Okay, so the RAM for this laptop is DDR3. And you know that there is many types of memories like DDR1. DDR1 basically has a power voltage of 2.5 volt. DDR2 with power voltage of 1.8 volt. VTT and 0.9 volt VTT because the RAM basically contains or has two voltages one main voltage and another secondary voltage for terminals. Okay, so the voltage for terminals is always the half of the main voltage. I will show you all this in the next slides. So we have the DDR3 here, okay? So this is the USB connectors, as you can see here we have the wireless LAN connector and Bluetooth connector. Here we have the touch screen, over here connector and controller. Over here we have the HDD connector, means the hard disk drive. So there is basically two kind of drives. HDD, the hard disk drive, or ODD, optical disk drive. So for this laptop, we use the HDD connector. And over here we have the ODD, means optical disk drive. Sorry, for drives there is HDD and SSD, solid state drive. Okay, not ODD. So HDD means hard disk drive and SSD or solid state drive. The solid state drive basically doesn't contain any mechanical parts like HDD that contain motors and desks. Okay, 
So this is just Audity for CD-ROMs. Okay, here we have the audio controller, here we have speaker combo jacks. And over here we have the keyboard controller. As you can see, this is basically the super IO. Okay, this is the super IO, the chip that is responsible for the whole power in the motherboard. So always, if you have a power problem, you should check this IC visually and using the multimeter check the ceramic capacitors around it okay and over here we have the bios the basic input output system this is a small chip usually with eight pins or terminals here the capacity for this bios is four megabytes so i will add here a tip that if you have a failed bios and you will you want to flash it or to reprogram it with another correct file, you should always check its capacity. For example, here we have 4 megabytes. You should reprogram that chip with another file with the same capacity, 4 megabytes, not 2 megabytes or 8 megabytes. Okay. Here we have the fan connector or that used to cool down the APO okay so the LAN controller the RG45 for the network it contains eight terminals okay here we have the mini card and the card reader connector and of course here we have just the USB in page 23 we have always pay attention to this trick here you will find for every connector and controller the page here in the left here we have the page 17 it means you will find the transform rg45 in page 17 in this schematic for example the hdmi connector in page 13 okay so the hdd connector in page 16 all the d connector in page 16 also and so on okay and here i want to add that here as you can see these lines are buses okay for example here we have a memory bus as you can see we have here a memory bus with the frequency of 1600 megahertz okay so this is a memory bus and here we have a usb bus as you can see here and here we have other buses for example the bus that connect between the keyboard controller and the APU is LPC bus, and here we have SPI bus, and so on. So let's move on to the next page. So here in this second page, as you can see, we have basically the power sequence for this laptop. So here, as you can see, I want to add that the main or important page in every schematic is the power sequence you know why because if you understand just the power sequence for every laptop you can figure out and understand the working principle and how this laptop works okay you will have a general idea of the circuits and the working principle of the motherboard okay so before studying this power sequence i want just to tell you that i have many videos like this one in my channel really many videos that speak about schematics how to test motherboard components motherboard component names and functions and so on so just the home page of my channel and you will find many many videos i want also to add that i post and i upload regularly free schematic in my patreon page you will find in my Patreon page all schematics they are free and of course 50 percent of that schematic are paid a buy it buy i post it and i upload it just for you for free you will find also in the Patreon page many tips and tricks on how to repair laptop motherboards. You will find exclusive content. So please, 
if you want to improve your skills, don't hesitate to visit my Patreon page. And also, I want to tell you, welcome to your suggestion and ideas in order to create more new videos. So let's get started and study this power sequence. So here, as you can see, always you will begin, you should begin here with the AC adapter, as you can see. So for this laptop, we have the AC adapter with 19 volt and 65 watt. Okay, so 19 volt. So we have the VN, okay, 19 volt here, and this is basically the charge circuit or charge control. We have the PQ24725 integrated circuit. So this circuit, of course, is always connected with the battery, okay? Because if you remove the power adapter, the battery will power the motherboard. So here, we will get always do B plus or the main voltage. This voltage is exactly this voltage, the 19 volt. So the main voltage will be distributed to all circuits in this motherboard, as you can see, okay? So the first circuit, as you can see, is in order to generate the APU core, okay? And the APU core for the North Bridge, so here we have the voltages, 1.5 volt and 1.3 volt, okay? For the North Bridge and the APU core. Of course, the North Bridge is integrated in the APU core, okay? So the second circuit, as you can see here, this is the IC or the integrated circuit that is responsible to generate these two voltages, RT8207, okay? So it generates, as you can see here, 1.5 volts here, okay? And also generates 0.75 volt. This is basically for RAM DDR3. As I told you before, this is the main voltage, 1.5 volt, and this is the voltage for terminals, the secondary voltage. This voltage, 0.75 volt, is the half of this voltage. <coughs> Here, the third circuit, as you, as you can see here, we will get here 19 volt and, and then it will generate 0.95 for the GFX, okay? Here we have another circuit that will generate 3 volt always and 1.8 volt always via this IC. Here, the last circuit, as you can see here, will generate, as you can see, via this I see TP is 22, 966, plus 3 volt and 5 volts. Okay, so this is the working principle. So now, after seeing and studying this power sequence, you have the idea here that you have the adapter, you have the battery and the main circuit or integrated circuit that divide the power here is the BQ24725. You can just look for this IC in the motherboard and you will know that this is the charge IC. So this IC gives 95 volt. So if you don't find, for example, 95 volt here in the circuits, means what? Means you should check this IC. Maybe this IC is failed or some of components around this IC, like MOSFETs, diodes, etc., are failed. So, if you don't find here 19 volt, you should check the IC or the, or the charge IC circuit. But if you don't find the 19 volt here, you should check the adapter. Okay? So, if you get 19 volt here, as you can see, that is applied for all the circuits, and for example, all the circuits are, are okay, but here you didn't find 3 volt always. You didn't get here 3 volt always. Automatically, you have problem here in this IC. You should check all components around it. It can be the IC itself or the MOSFETs 
diodes or capacitors near the IC. I'm going to show you now a model of a circuit in the motherboard. So, as you can see here, basically this is a circuit. Here we have a 3 volt and 5 volt circuit, as you can see here. We have here 5 volt always, and over here we have 3 volt always. So, this is the 3 volt, 5 volt circuit. All circuits of the motherboard has the same working principle. You will find always an IC, you will find two MOSFETs, you will find the inductor here or coil in order to, in, to increase the current and you will find the filtering capacitors over here and sometimes you will find diodes for protection okay so let's zoom in a little bit so for example here we have this ic as you can see pu301 the reference of this ic in the motherboard so its reference or part number is rt82 43EZ QW. So this IC is the control IC that will control other component in order to generate this voltage. So here we have two MOSFETs as you can see. And over here we have the main voltage as we have seen in the power sequence. Here we have the 19 volt. So the 19 volt will be applied to these two ceramic capacitors or PF capacitors, as you can see. So these ceramic capacitors have as a capacity 4.7 microfarad and 25 volt, the same characteristics. So 19 volt will be applied to these capacitors or filtering capacitors, and then will go directly to the first MOSFET, BQ302. Okay, so. This MOSFET will let the 19 volt pass in accordance with here the control signal. As you can see, we have here the upper gate. The control signal will be applied to the gate. As you can see, here we have the gate, here we have the drain, and here we have the source. Why? Because here we have four pins connected together. It means this is the drain. Okay, pin number five. And over here we have three pins connected together. Here we have the source, and this is to get. So once the MOSFET will be controlled or energized by this this IC, so the voltage will pass here. <coughs> so basically, the voltage, the amount of voltage that will be passed through this MOSFET is controlled by this signal okay so we will get here about five volts okay so then this five volt will pass through this inductor in order to increase the current and then here the voltage will be filtered in order to get a pure and a continue a continue voltage okay so the same here for the three volt channel the same we have the IC we have two MOSFETs so here we have the main voltage the 19 volt that will be passed through this inductor through these capacitors in order to filter and to remove the noise okay and then we have this MOSFET here we have the drain here we have the source and here we have the gate as you can see upper gate two okay also we have another MOSFET we have lower gate two okay here we will get the 3 volt as you can see after passing through this inductor in order to increase the current we will get 3 volt and also this 3 volt will go here to phase to LX 3 volt so the IC in this pin verify exactly whether we get the exact 3 volt or not if you understand this circuit you can understand any other circuit for any laptop motherboard you know why because for laptop motherboards the working principle and the circuits are the same there is just a small differences okay so, so please don't forget to suggest and give me more ideas if you want to create more videos and please don't forget to support the channel you will find the, the support button under any videos and in the home page of the channel and please if you enjoyed this video don't forget to like it subscribe 
share because this motivates me to create more videos. Thank you very much.